Hey, Nathan here from PH Studios, and welcome back to another Tower Defense game tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to extend the tutorial from last time where we got everything all set up, and we're going to fill in the content for the screens. We're going to set them up as public classes and make sure they are derivatives of the uh, game screen, menu screen, or whatever screen we need. And then we'll go ahead and code the tower defense game class file. Okay, so let's start with the video intro screen and we're going to set this up as a public class and it's going to be a derivative of game screen and you will need to add using screen system library and then we can implement abstract class data. All right. Now let's go to play screen and do the same thing. Public class play screen. And that's going to be a derivative of game screen. And we'll need to add using screen system library. And then implement abstract class game screen. Onto the pause screen, same thing, public class. And that will be a derivative of menu screen. And then we'll, we will need to add using screen system library and implement abstract class. Option screen, that will be a public class. Option screen is a game screen derivative, so we'll need to add using screen system library and implement the abstract class. Main menu screen is of course going to be a menu screen, so it's going to be a public class and it's going to be a derivative of menu screen. Add the using statement and implement abstract class. Level selection screen is going to be a public class. And it's going to be a game screen derivative. Using screen system library and implement abstract class. Help screen is going to be a public class. And it will be a game screen derivative. Add the using statement and implement abstract class. Game over screen. It's going to be a public class and it will be a menu screen. Add the using statement and implement abstract class. Uh, let's go ahead and save all and close all the tabs. Alright, so let's get started with the Tower Defense game class file. So we're going to start off with creating a couple of fields up top. So we have the Graphics Device Manager and Sprite Batch. Now we need a screen system. And then let's add the using statement. So it's going to be a screen system, screen system. And then we need to have a color for a clear color. All right, so now we're setting up the graphics device and we need to set the graphics dot preferred back buffer width is equal to 1280 graphics dot preferred back buffer height is equal to 720 now you can change the resolution if you want uh, content that root directory is fine screen system is equal to new screen system pass it this and components dot add screen system all 
All right, so video manager. And that will be using the Tower Defense Engine. So video manager, and now I'm just going to call it VM, is equal to new video manager. Open parentheses. We'll pass it the content and the path to the video, the folder. So we'll just pass it the folder as video slash slash, just like that. Closing parentheses and semicolon. Now that's going to use the content. So whatever folder you made it, remember the last tutorial I created the folder structure. So whatever folder you made it, you will want to put it there. So that will get started with the video manager. Now initialize. Before base.initialize, let's go ahead and start doing some stuff. Screen system dot add screen new video intro screen and now you can leave it like this you can leave the namespaces dot screens I know some people prefer it that way but if you want to do it the same way I do it's just make sure that the namespaces are the same in order to do that let's go ahead and copy this line here go to the find menu control F and then paste that in there and then go to the quick replace tab and replace it with just delete the dot screens so we're going to replace all the namespace tower defense game implementation dot screens with namespace tower defense game implementation I'm going to replace all in the current project all right so we have one two three four five six seven eight so that was fine we'll save all and close all again so there you could do it either way I just preferred in the same namespace okay so after that line let's set the clear color is equal to new color I'm going to the picture I gave you for the background uh, you can make your own picture and what I did to get the color of that is I went to, into Photoshop and I did the average blur okay so if you want to have your own background image here's how you find the average color so you open it up in Photoshop and then you go to filter blur and then average and that will average the color out and you should have a solid color and now for RGB I 70 132 and 143 so that's where I'm going to put in the code 70 comma 132 comma 143 So that's all you'll need to do. That's just a clear color. Um, you know how we have the, usually in the draw method, we have the clear color dot cornflower blue. We're going to use our own clear color for that. Okay, so now let's worry about loading in our audio files. And to do that, we need to add a reference. So let's right click and add a reference. And let's add the Microsoft.xna.framework.exact. That one right there. And I sorted it by the file name so it'll be easier. It'll be uh, sorted alphabetically. So I just load the exact reference. And now let's go ahead and start coding Audio Engine. AE is equal to new audio engine content dot root directory plus quote slash slash audio slash slash td game dot xgs end quote end parentheses semicolon now that is using my folder structures, so if we go to the audio tab, 
we will see tdgame.xgs. Now I'm going to bring this over here a little bit so you can see it on one line here. Alright, so that's the audio engine. Now we need to create the wave bank. WB is equal to new wave bank. Open parentheses. The audio engine, AE, comma. Content dot root directory plus open parentheses slash slash audio slash slash wave space bank dot xwb end quote end parentheses and semicolon. Now we need to build the sound bank. SB is equal to new sound bank. The audio engine AE comma the content dot root directory plus the audio folder and the sound space bank dot xsb end quote and parentheses and semicolon now the tower defense engine has a audio manager so let's create a new manager for the audio and we pass it the audio engine, the wave bank, and the sound bank. So that's all we need to do to get our audio ready to go. Now if we go to the update method, we're going to update our audio manager. And the draw method, we can just leave it blank, but we do have to change the color.cornflower blue to clear color. Alright, so we press F5 and the build will fail because it could not auto detect which importer to use. So the audio files I gave you have already been compiled, so if we select them in the Solution Explorer, It'll try to compile them again, so all we need to do is change this to none. Set the build action to none. And set the copy to output directory to copy always. Do that for all three files for the audio. Set the build action to none and copy always. Same for the wave bank. Compile, build action set to none, copy to output directory, Change from do not copy to copy always. Alright, so last but not least, let's try to build it and we will get some errors. So what are these errors about? Well, it tells us we the first error, the error is kind of a uh, not a useful error because it's not directly related to our namespaces and our tower defense engine. See, it also couldn't find the audio manager. So the error is not really useful in this case. So the one you want to focus on then is the warning. The reference assembly, all that stuff, that DLL could not be resolved because it has dependency on the .NET 4, not the .NET 4 framework. So that's the problem why I cannot load that DLL. So all we need to do is right-click our game implementation and go to the Properties tab and the Applications tab and change the target framework from .NET Framework 4 Client Profile to .NET Framework 4. Click Yes, it'll have to reload the application. Now if we go to Build, Rebuild Solution, it will succeed. So that error is not really useful. But the problem is that warning, it couldn't load that DLL, therefore we weren't able to use the engine classes because we were targeting a different framework version. Okay, so one final thing. Let's go to the game implementation and expand the references. Now this is the issue I ran into releasing the game. I'm not sure why they automatically add the gamer services, but if you're working on a Windows version of your game and you want it 
anybody to run it even with the XNA framework redistributable you will need to delete that reference that will require the full XNA framework XNA game studio to work if you delete that reference they do not they can get by with just the redist now for press F5 we will get a exception but that's because we have not coded anything yet all right so that's it for this tutorial next tutorial let's work on the settings file so i hope you enjoy this tutorial stay tuned and hopefully we'll get this thing coded pretty quickly